Well, this is where the tar ends and the dirt begins. And um, we'll see how things go. When did things change? When did the double cab, which was the site manager's workhorse, become a luxury status symbol? No child wanted to be dropped off at school in their dad's work bucky. And in the same vein, you wouldn't want to take the work bucky out on the weekend. I think that happened when double cabs started driving like SUVs. They became more comfortable, the diesel engines were more refined and didn't smell as bad. It was easier to drive, it was soft, cushy, comfortable, more agreeable. It didn't require arms of steel and massive muscles to change gears. It was no longer just for the mine foreman or the site manager. It was now used for the school run. And admittedly, they've started to look a lot better. I am in the GWM P-Series LT 4x4. And boy oh boy has GWM really gone to town with this vehicle. This P-Series basically replaces the Steed and is such a departure from what that model range offered. You have a full leather interior, quilted mind you, uh, heated seats, uh, there is uh, touchscreen infotainment with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In terms of tech, you're getting blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, forward collision alert. Really all the bells and whistles, everything that opens and closes. We are on our way to go and put this vehicle through its paces off-road. And while we're driving there on-road, the vehicle is absolutely fantastic. You can definitely feel an SUV bias here. So it will be very interesting to see how this handles the rocky trail we're about to hit. I'm in the new Ford Ranger FX4, and in essence, it's a, a baby wild track. It's an XLT with a little bit of creature comforts thrown in for good measure. In the interior, you get leather upholstery, a leather-bound steering wheel with raised stitching, and you've got the soft-touch leather dashboard with some red raised stitching. You're also going to get this SYNC 3 touchscreen infotainment system, which now has Ford Pass Connect on it. A Ford Pass Connect is an app that you put on your smartphone and it allows you to access so many more features. The FX4 version is also going to get a couple of exterior trims to set it apart. So you get a lovely big black grill up front there, you've got extended sports bars at the back, a tow bar as standard, some stickers around and of course a nice set of black 18 inch wheels. And it makes it a really stylish attractive package. It doesn't necessarily add to the functionality, it just makes it appear a lot more sporty, a little more upmarket, a little more luxurious. Well, this is where the tar ends and the dirt begins, and um, we'll see how things go. So, bud, Ranger FX4. What can you say about it? I've driven it uh, down in the Wild Coast. Absolutely fantastic vehicle. It is a bread and butter double cab. Everybody knows that they're familiar with the name. It, this, it's one of the country's best sellers. This is what's... Uh, Agreed. So I'm most curious about this one, uh, the Haval P series, and especially this one, which is geared more towards the leisure market. Now, both you and I, we've been to China. We've seen where these are made. We've been to the R&D facility. We know that there are 1,200 engineers that they've scalped from across the world. Merck, Kia, BMW. They've done it. They've all been doing the work on these vehicles. So they've got the right people behind it. Do you think that in this short span of time that they've progressed, that they've learned from the mistakes that took Ford the last 20 years? Oh yes, um, but I think the true test is going to be what we're about to do now because this is pretty much where the gravel stops yeah, this is it. and the rocks begin and this is going to be the test, uh, the acid test. 
so to say. I think it's going to be the acid test for this one. I'm feeling pretty confident about the FX4. Whoa. As much as, they, as they've softened it up a bit, I think the underpinnings are still rock hard. In terms of capability, I think the P-Series is going to handle it just fine. It's going to be about the refinement overall. But I tell you what, let's go. Let's tackle it. Well, here we are in the rough stuff, the rocky areas. Now, it's interesting to note that this P-Series is equipped with the same engine layout as that FX4. It's a two liter turbo diesel, the single turbo. Now, this vehicle puts out 120 kilowatts, 400 Newton meters, and it is pushed into an eight speed automatic transmission from ZF and the power is sent to all four wheels via a Borg Warner 4x4 off-road system. There's no levers or anything to pull inside to get into off-road mode. Single button just to push there into four low and off you go. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, things have gotten considerably rougher in patches. But this FX4 just sort of eats it up. We're a slightly more level area here but I've selected four high now and of course because this is a 4x4 version I've got the option of two high, four high and four low as is standard fare. The slight difference here is what's under the bonnet. Under the bonnet you're going to get a two litre single turbo engine. Uh, while things like the Thunder and the Wild Track get that beautiful bi-turbo engine, that twin turbo engine, this one has to make do with a single turbo. So the power's a little down on its brethren. Uh, it makes 132 kilowatts, 420 newton meters. It doesn't quite have that same amount of poke as one would expect, but it's still more than adequate. And that 420 newton meters, well, comes in really early, which means you can do climbs like this over loose surfaces with nothing more than breathing on the throttle. So it is really nice. Uh, this is actually the first time that I'm really putting this 10-speed gearbox through its paces off-road. Yes, 10-speed gearbox. You may think that that's too many gears. Who in their right mind needs 10 gears? But this is a very clever gearbox. It has the ability to hop gears so it can go from third into fifth or third into sixth if need be and it can drop down in the same fashion so it's only when you're really crawling along like this that all those tiny little increments leave you right in that torque band which means that the slightest throttle modulation sees you powering out of whatever you need to power out of i have to say though the suspension is a bit harsh but I want to put that down to tire pressures because we haven't changed them. But yeah, there's a small part of me that's saying this is still a very road biased vehicle. But it's not to say that the vehicle can't handle it. It is definitely powering through this. And one of the nice things that I do find is that you can actually set the stiffness of your steering wheel. So it can be ultra light, like you're looking for parking, or it can be tough with a lot of feedback it gives you a definite idea of where your wheels are pointing. Well we're almost to the top of the mountain. I wonder how Chad's making out in that FX4. The steering is beautiful on this sort of surface as well. It's weighted enough that you can feel what the front wheels are doing yet not so heavy that it's 
pulling in your hands. It was always one of those bits that I lamented around double cabs is the vague on-center steering. It looks like you were driving through an American movie and doing, having to do this. But with this, nah, it's wonderfully true. Just a nice light grip on it and it's so easy to navigate where you want to be and where you need to be. In terms of fuel consumption, they claim that this will do 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. It's not terrible, it's not bad, but yes, there are models out there that can do it a little better. If you want to talk about surprises, this GWMP series has absolutely astounded me. Uh, this trail is by no means uh, easy uh, on people or the vehicles and this P-Series is just lapping it up. One of the other surprising things is of course the price. This GWM P-Series comes in at 544,900 Rand and that is about 150,000 Rand cheaper than that FX4. Now with that uh, very, very low price, you're going to get a five year, 100,000 kilometer warranty and service plan. The Ranger FX4 is a bit like polyfiller for the Ford Ranger lineup. It fills a gap that Ford believes exists in their lineup. And I mean, they've got so many products already as is. At 704,500 Rand, it comes in at about 50,000 Rand cheaper than a wild track. Uh, maybe not as big a disparage between this and a Thunder though. But that's still a fair whack of money considering what you're not getting in this FX4. And when you compare that to what you are getting in the P-Series, the saving of about 150,000 Rand, well, cheapers, that's simple maths. I don't doubt that they're going to sell Ranger FX4s. Whether they're in volume or not remains to be seen, but they will sell them because of this little blue oval and the prestige that the Ford badge carries. Now, despite how surprisingly agile this vehicle is and that amazing price, I can't help but feeling that there's a little something missing. And I want to say, that it is developmental years. As I said earlier, it has taken Ford the better part of 30 years to get to the level where they are now. And make no mistake, Haval and GWM are right on their heels, snapping away. But there's just a little something missing with this vehicle and I think it is, it's that experience. But don't knock them out yet. I think the next incarnation of this vehicle should have the big boys really worried.